อบคุณครับอะไร I wish I can give you something but I don't have anything to give you uh, we will have one class left on Wednesday next week and I probably finish all the lecture today okay so on Wednesday there will be examination no um, examination problem from the previous year that I can show you. Um, I wish I can tell you f today what kind of examination for this year should be. However, we have not discussed among our professor yet. So we do not know what, what's going to happen. But you do know the date already, right? There will be three hours examination, but I have no idea how many problems that there would be. Last year, there are only two problems. The year before that, there are three. I'm not sure. I, I can tell you on Wednesday next week. Okay. For, for from earlier, sometimes we let you choose the way to solve the problem by yourself. Like we do not ask you to do shell balance or equation. We let let them. I mean, let you do it as you wish. But in some years, we ask you to do particular things. But for this year, we have not decided yet. Hopefully, it will be easy. OK? Do you know the score for heat transport yet for other problems? No? Um, it should be announced soon. And I have heard that for the first problem, the score is pretty high. It's not bad. The score is not bad. All right. Shall we get into our business? Today we will continue our lecture on example regarding condensation of um, vapor into cold surface. On Wednesday we talk about doing mass transport or mass balance of species A, species A diffused from bulk phase into the film resistant and then in contact with the solid wall condensed form a liquid. Okay, if we set up the system to be a vapor only, the film resistant only, you can get you can start with equation of continuity for species A, and end it up with the concentration profile, and then if you take the mole, the flux, molar flux of species A, and then you can get Na later on to be a constant like this. Okay. For today, we will try to figure out the temperature profile by using equation of energy. And this is equation of energy. Okay? Again, I use vector form. I do not expand the vectors just for convenience. In vector form, the first term here will be dropped to be zero because it is steady state, right? And then this term is neglect because we just neglect all force applied to our fluid because our fluid is just vapor 
and then gravity force upon vapor is negligible. So what we have would be del dot E, which is del E by dx, del EY by dy, and del EZ by dz. Okay? We do not concern x or z direction. So therefore, what you have here would be dEY by dy equal to 0. One thing is, um, for this particular problem, since we have mass transfer and energy transfer at the same time, and energy transfer will be affected by mass transfer. So therefore, we have to use this equation somehow, right? The effects of mass transport will be plugged in the combined flux for energy transport. So therefore, we cannot use the equation of energy in the previous form, the form that we did during the, the lesson for the energy transport. We need to use this form because we have to add this term. Okay? Now, once we get this, we can start with the combination of flux. The combined flux would equal to conductive mass transport and diffusive, um, et, I'm sorry, conductive energy transport and diffusive energy transport, assuming that all the work will be neglected. Okay. Writing down for y direction. <coughs> now, for our system here, we ha we have two two components. It is binary A and B only. So we can expand this summation into partial molar enthalpy of A times flux of A. And in this case in y direction plus hb and b y direction as well again every time you you deal with flux mass flux or molar flux you have a problem regarding two fluxes at the same time fortunately for this particular problem nb1 turns to be zero by the, result, by the reason that we discussed on Wednesday, right? This becomes zero. So you don't need to um, concern about partial molar enthalpy of B. But if this one is not zero, then this term must be um, found somehow. All right. So our point would be plugging this equation back to this differential equation, and then you get equation that would be in form of temperature. If you integrate it, you can get temperature profile. Of course, you need to convert partial molar enthalpy into temperature first, right? How can we do that? We're just consulting thermodynamics. Partial molar enthalpy for, from thermodynamics. Again, since this is not thermodynamics, this class is transport phenomena. So we, we're not going to focus much on thermodynamics. Okay? But I like to emphasize that if thermodynamics is important, then from here to there, you need to use what you have learned from thermodynamics. Okay? But from now, I'm going to say that let us assume the solution or the mixture to be ideal mixture. So therefore, delta H of mixing is negligible. As long as delta H of mixing is negligible or heat of mixing is negligible, then you can calculate enthalpy of the mixture from the mole of A times molar enthalpy of A plus mole of B times molar enthalpy of B, right? Because normally you have 
delta edge of mixing here, but this turned to be negligible. All right. This one is indeed equal to mole of A, partial molar enthalpy of A times, I'm sorry, added by moles of B, partial molar enthalpy of B. But as long as you can take this um, heat of mixing to be zero, then what you have would be these two terms are approximately the same. So as long as you have ideal mixture, then partial molar enthalpy of A would be approximately the same as molar enthalpy of POA. These two are different. This one is A as the part of the mixture. This one is A as pure species. Okay? If it is the same, then you can say that enthalpy of pure species A can be converted as a function of temperature by using heat capacity. Okay? And we know that enthalpy of species A would equal to heat capacity of species A integrated by dt. An integral usually starts from somewhere, from one temperature to another. What is this temperature? Reference temperature, right? Because enthalpy is not absolute, it's relative amount. So we can choose any relative um, reference temperature. Let's call this T0. What is this temperature? Now this temperature would be temperature in our system. Of course, this temperature would be vary with respect to position. Okay? So, normally integral Cp dt would equal to delta T, right? So now, H of A supposed to be equal to integral here minus enthalpy of A at T0, or standard reference. So you can say that HA will be this one, and enthalpy of pure species, or delta H, should equal to integral Cp dt from reference temperature to temperature of our system. And then we move the enthalpy of reference temperature down here. Now, since enthalpy is relative, and we can choose reference to our own choice, we can choose it like what, what, whatever we like. That means we can also choose the enthalpy at reference state to be any number that we like. What would you choose? Zero. zero. So this one is let this one equal to zero. Okay? So therefore, the enthalpy of POA should equal to CP of A. Of course, this one would be molar times delta T, T minus T zero. Plug this one back to, the, to this equation so that we can eventually convert everything to temperature. So EY would equal to minus K dT by dY plus NAY times CP of A T minus T zero. Okay? 